I was like just reading a script. This is good. Good afternoon and welcome to today's TIGER webinar. This series is a benefit for RIT alumni and an important part of keeping you moving forward in your professional and personal development. I'm Lydia Palmer, Senior Director of Marketing and Communications in RIT's Division of Development and Alumni Relations, and I'm your moderator for today's webinar. Before we begin, let's take a moment to ensure that everyone is ready and familiar with the presentation tools. All participants in today's webinar have joined in mute mode and cannot be heard during the presentation. However, we absolutely encourage participation. To submit your questions at any time, please enter them in the chat box. The chat box can be opened by clicking on the chat icon at the right of your webinar window. We will make every effort to address all your comments and questions throughout the webinar. You are joining today's webinar using broadcast audio. If for any reason you wish to dial in by phone, dial-in information is provided in the chat box. Live captioning is also being provided during the webinar, and you can find the link to access that in the chat box as well. Note that today's webinar will be recorded and made available, complete with captions, in approximately one week following today's event. All participants will receive an email with a link to the recording. If you have any technical questions, please feel free to type those into the chat box and we will do our best to get you the appropriate answers. And with that, let's get started. Today's webinar is Building National Awareness, Shaping Perceptions, an RIT case study in marketing. We are joined by a panel of presenters, three members of the leadership team in RIT's Marketing and Communications Division. It is our pleasure to introduce them to you now. John Trerweiler is Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer at RIT. John is responsible for the university's marketing and communications, including goal setting, strategic development, and tactical execution for marketing and branding, communications, and PR and editorial, as well as digital and web. He joined RIT in 2016, bringing more than 30 years of experience in marketing and advertising for some widely recognized companies and products, including H.J. Hines, Bumblebee Seafoods Company, Time Warner Cable, and Cable Vision Systems. Prior to joining RIT, John served as Chief Marketing Officer for the Ross School of Business at the University of Michigan, during which time the school was able to increase its worldwide rankings, fundraising, and applications. He is a graduate of Michigan State University and holds an MBA from the University of Michigan. John, please say hello to our audience. Hello, everybody. Ken Sagepal is the Associate Vice President of Marketing Strategy and Creative Services at RIT. She is responsible for strengthening RIT's brand integrity, promoting it through compelling creative output, and measuring overall marketing effectiveness. Ken brings more than 15 years of experience in strategy development, brand management, marketing research, and customer relationship management to her role. She joined the university in 2017. Prior to RIT, Ken served in senior level marketing roles at Purdue University, where she also earned an MS in communications and, MBA, and an MBA in marketing and strategic management. Ken, can you address our Tiger alumni? Hi everyone, this is Ken. And last but certainly not least, RIT alumnus Bob Finnerty is the Associate Vice President for Communications. Bob is responsible for promoting and protecting RIT's reputation via earned, owned, and shared media. He advises RIT leadership on internal and external communication matters and also oversees intercollegiate athletics communications. Bob joined RIT in 2002 after a 13-year career in news journalism notably serving as the Metro Editor for the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle, where he oversaw the work of more than 50 journalists. He holds a BA in Communications from Purdue University, and in 2007, he received an MS in Professional Studies with a concentration in Marketing from RIT. Bob, can you say hello to your fellow alumni? Hi, fellow Tigers. Welcome to our distinguished plant goodness sakes. Welcome to our distinguished panel. And if the three of you are ready, our audience is all yours. All right. Thank you very much, Lydia. This is John. I'll get it started. Uh, Ken, Bob, and I are privileged and excited uh, to be with you today to talk about our marketing and branding story. We look forward to having a lively conversation over the next 50 minutes or so. 
and we'd be delighted to continue the dialogue beyond that as well. So let's get started. Uh, I'll be covering five, uh, in the course of our presentation, we're gonna answer five following questions. Uh, first, why does it matter? Uh, what have we learned? What have we done? What are the results? And how can you help? So let's start with why does it matter? Hopefully many of you were able to watch our men's hockey team play Canisius on Saturday night, whether that was in person, on TV, or via live streaming. We celebrated the 10th anniversary of our fantastic Frozen Four team with almost all of the players from that team coming back to campus to be honored. The arena was packed to the rafters with 3,500 students, alumni, faculty, and staff, as well as other fans of RIT and hockey. And the magic from 2010 was rekindled with the Tigers storming back from a 4-1 deficit with less than nine minutes to go, winning in dramatic fashion, 5-4. I mentioned that game in part because it really hit home as a reminder for me about some of the characteristics about RIT Tigers that make us truly better, different, and special. And hopefully the words that you see here are resonating with all of you as well. The problem is that not a lot of people know about RIT. And simply put, you can't have an emotional connection with something or someone that you've never heard of. As you can see in this chart, in terms of awareness, only about one third of people outside of the Northeast region have heard of RIT. While our perception of quality is higher, it is still fairly regional in nature and like awareness significantly lags many in our peer set. Uh, and even if we had awareness, the collective message being sent out was that we are essentially a 1,300-acre business park of completely unrelated businesses that just happened to be located on the campus of RIT in Henrietta, New York. Uh, this cacophony of literally hundreds of logos only makes sense if the units derive no benefit from an association with RIT or any other unit that exists on campus, and vice versa. And we know this isn't the case. And on the web, the user experience was even more fragmented with over 2,000 websites making up the rit.edu experience. <clears throat> so one reason marketing and branding matters is that we want to share the tiger pride with as broad an audience as possible. We want to shine a bright spotlight on this amazing university to our audiences that will enable RIT to continue its strong upward trajectory. And how will we do that? By creating the positioning and language, both written and visual, that differentiates and bring the RIT story to life in a clear, compelling, and consistent manner. The other reason marketing and branding matters is because of the virtuous circle, or really the self-sustaining engine that is created. Right now we are spending almost a quarter billion dollars, that's with a B, annually in financial aid to help push prospective students through the door at RIT. If we can invest just a tiny fraction of those dollars into marketing and branding efforts, we can also pull students and their parents to the university and increase our pricing power along the way. This shows the process at the top, starting with an increased investment, which leads to increased awareness, which we know has a 92% positive correlation with an increased perception of quality, this then leads to increased views and visits, which correlates very highly with increased applications and enrollment, as well as increased engagement and giving. And both of those in turn lead to increased revenue and profit, some of which can be reinvested back into marketing and branding. And then we have our lather, rinse and repeat sequence. To increase awareness and perception of value, we set about building the sturdiest kind of stool. And our folks over in industrial design know that is a three-legged stool. From a marketing and branding perspective, the key components of that stool are, first, a brand identity system and positioning. Second, our website and really our digital platform. And third, our reputation and advertising campaign. But first, we needed to understand uh, from our diverse set of audiences, what, where we fit in today's and tomorrow's marketplace, what are the biggest opportunities and threats that we face, again, what makes us better, different, and special, 
And finally, how we can position ourselves to match our strengths with our biggest opportunities. So we conducted an extensive and rigorous qualitative and quantitative research with over 10,000 people, including almost 3,000 alumni and almost 2,500 prospective students. This slide shows some of the many groups that we worked and collaborated with throughout the process, including our alumni advisory board and student governments, as well as our board of trustees. As a result, we constructed a unified RIT story that we could then collectively share with the rest of the world. Let's look first at the words and the messaging. It really starts by determining what is RIT's brand essence? What is RIT's brand DNA, its core purpose, its heart and soul? What we found is that RIT is an incubator for the exceptional. And what makes us uniquely RIT? We combine creativity and innovation. We operate at the intersection of technology, the arts and design. We are doers and makers through our co-op and experiential learning. We are an accepting community. And as a result of these four elements, we bring about change both within ourselves and the world around us. Importantly, our evolved messaging and creative platform helped to inform and infuse RIT's new vision and mission. You can see how our brand positioning really came to life in the statement. We shape the future and improve the world through creativity and innovation. As an engaged, intellectually curious, and socially conscious community, we leverage the power of technology, the arts, and design for the greater good. Then we created a, uh, I had a creative platform and a messaging map, and you re we're really going to see just the inner core of it, the brand promise. The way to read is from top to bottom, but at RIT, we call on curious minds to connect their creativity and innovation to invent new and better ways to move the world forward. And we don't have time to go through it here, um, but the message map then really flowers out to show how it is that we do that through our programs, our perspective, and our people including the proof points for each area. With our new brand architecture, we are no longer competing with each other on a 1300 acre campus. We are now competing as an integrated university that can hold its own against the very best universities in the US and around the world. The brand architecture builds awareness of the overall university brand at the same time strengthens the awareness and association with the various units that make up RIT. You can see that RIT is the signature element, while the I is clearly focused on the area that is being emphasized, whether it be a college or a division, a school or, or a department, or a program. And with our all-important spirit mark, after a lot of back and forth and discussion, where we net it out is that the athletic mark already has tremendous brand equity and creates a very strong emotional connection to and with the RIT community. So rather than creating a different or competing spirit mark, we we're ultimately able to instead broaden the use of our well-regarded and beloved RIT tiger and paw to embrace the entire RIT community. Lastly, we created in close partnership with the faculty of the College of Art and Design, a visual design system that sets the tone for how people initially see RIT and how they recognize us moving forward. It consists of typography, photography, graphic elements, and color. More significantly, it's the culmination of how all of these pieces work together to convey and strengthen our overall brand message. To learn more about the design system and the underlying strategy, please go to our online brand portal, which you can see the link to right here. Here is a sample of how the new look and feel is coming to life through merchandise. And here is how this is being translated across some of the units across campus. Finally, we talked with President Munson about the idea of an elevator speech to quickly explain the RIT brand. And this is what he had to say. You ever wonder what people think about you? First impressions, lasting impressions. Your brand is a summary of what people think about you when you are not in the room. Here at RIT, we've refreshed our brand to reflect how far we've come. So, who are we? What is our vision? How do we distinguish ourselves from other universities? Let me give you the elevator speech. 
At RIT, we blend technology, the arts, and design. We're a kaleidoscope of curious minds working together through creativity and innovation to move the world forward. Hey, that's worthy of a tweet. Let's work together to solidify our position as a creative and innovative powerhouse. We have no interest in the status quo. You are all brand champions. Look in the mirror. You are exceptional. We need for you all to understand the brand and tell our story to the world. Because at RIT, we're always onto something amazing. All right, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ken and Bob to talk about uh, some of the things we've done with the Reputation Campaign and Beyond. So, Ken, please take it away. Hi there, this is Ken again, and if you don't understand me because I have a hybrid accent of India, Indiana, and now Rochester, please uh, put that in the chat box. I would be happy to repeat something that you might have missed. Um, so, the... Uh, all this work that we did obviously was very exciting, but what is even more exciting is to really take our brand into the marketplace and let other people, our key target audiences know what is RIT, what does it stand for, and really what is, uh, why does RIT matter? And why should you consider RIT, whether you're a student, staff member, faculty member, alum, et cetera. Um, so not only did we want to go wide in terms of awareness, but we also wanted to go deep. So we just, you know, we know that we have technology in our name, uh, but we wanted to increase the depth of awareness by really talking about the fact that while we are the Rochester Institute of Technology, we are really known for more than that. So in order to do that, we launched our biggest campaign in RIT history, which I believe since 1829. Um, we launched a campaign in spring and fall of 2019. The timing was to coincide with the web launch that Bob will talk more about. Um, we targeted key audiences, as, as you can see here, undergraduate student prospects, their influencers, mainly their, their families and counselors. We also allocated a sliver of the budget to academic peers because we know that our reputation and awareness really relies on how they perceive us as well. We started out with a broad, um, broad plan of, okay, what we have to canvas the entire United States, but we also have to look at you know, where is the most bang for the buck, if you will. We worked with enrollment management to figure out what is the likelihood of somebody from a particular state to come to RIT and invest in those areas. And also what is, what are the key indicators when it comes to say saturation of a marketplace or cost to advertise in a certain market. So. With all those very healthy discussions that took place, we focused on uh, the Northeast, but we also targeted key metro areas indicated in blue, which is LA, Bay Area, Seattle, Minneapolis, Chicago, Columbus, Cincinnati, etc. And we continue to refine this list as we find more intelligence. If we see some activity from another area, we do try to capitalize on that and invest more. Similarly, we pull back where we don't find enough activity or enough interest. The tactics spanned a wide range. As you can see, while it's mostly digital, we also did some analog tactics. And while some tactics were specific to those green and blue areas that I alluded to before, uh, we also had a couple of tactics such as Google AdWords and US News that re and Boingo um, that really uh, spanned all of the United States. Um, just a little sneak peek on the creative. 
So we we picked or we collectively said that the best way to communicate the RIT message is through stories because that's how a message is most likely to resonate. So we talked about some of our gems at RIT, but also coming back to our original positioning that John alluded to, which is really our creativity and innovation, our community, our experiential learning and co-op, the idea of making the world a better place, etc. So with that, we featured Magic Spell Studios. Here's a YouTube 15 second video. I'm not gonna play it, but it really, it's, it's something that starts at the beginning of any video that you might watch. So there are some bumper ads, there are some other um, in-video ads, if you will. We also use Snapchat, Instagram. We knew that our prospective audience was consuming this, these channels heavily. For parents and counselors, we also focused on some social media, predominantly Facebook. We talked about our EVT club, and which is an electric vehicle team. And the, with that, what we tried to hone in was that the idea of, and the copy read, and I don't have it here, but zero to job offer in 0.18 seconds. So it just kind of shows that the way that we're talking about outcomes but really being true to our brand through storytelling of this particular club. Obviously, we cannot forget NTID. That really makes RIT the place it is in terms of its rich, diverse culture. We featured a story about the theater and performing arts where deaf, hard of hearing, and hearing students come together to put on performances. We used a platform called Nativo, which is basically native advertising. And that really puts ads in relevant publications to make it feel very organic. So you don't feel like it's interruptive. You really feel that it's contextual. So if you think of Wired Magazine or Wired uh, website, and we put a technology ad in there, it feels like it's part of that particular content. Also, podcasts was, uh, was something that we tried and dabbled in um, because we know that there is more and more interest for podcasts these days. And this is all really formed by, informed by data. And we continue to monitor the trends, as I mentioned before. For academic peers, we talked about um, research and uh, experiential learning, uh, some things that we know our peers want to see when they look at other universities and what other universities are doing. So we use some trade publications, such as the Chronicle of Higher Education, also Inside Higher Education, that really are the, the most well-regarded publications when it comes to industry news. Last but not least, for all audiences, like I mentioned before, um, we all um, and all markets to a certain extent, we had a US News um, RIT profile page. We put an ad on there. If you go right now, you will not see it because right now we're not in the campaign mode. We are launching pretty quickly. But what I do want to mention here, which I think you might find interesting, is that the ad that you see on the US news page on the top left was actually conquered, and it's, and it's an advertising term, conquest advertising. RPI had that ad on US news on our page. So what we did, well, we took back our own territory to begin with. Um, so really just trying to be cognizant of where RIT is mentioned and making sure all they see is the RIT message. And then when we have, when we think, you know, then what we can do is we can do more conquest ads ourselves, but that's down the road. Uh, Boeing Go Wi-Fi sponsorship, it was, you know, airport advertising can be expensive. Um, so in order to get to the key metro area airports, what we decided to do was to partner with Boingo. And for people in order to use Wi-Fi or free Wi-Fi, they had to watch an RIT ad. We obviously wanted to have a presence at the Rochester airport though. So we, we had and will have a banner and some digital ads on the monitors for RIT. So people feel that they have actually entered the RIT territory, if you will, when they land at our airport. And then paid search. So if you look and you really type something in Google, 
uh, you type um, RIT co-op, we want to make sure we surface our own ads. Again, protecting your own turf is really the, the strategy that we wanted to go with. All of these activities drove people to landing pages where we could measure the effectiveness, but also gave them the depth that I alluded to before. So, you know, uh, an advertising ads can give you some hint about who we are and what we do. When you go to a landing page and you go to, when you scroll down these pages, you would see the full story about really what is amazing at Magic Spell Studios or what is that robotic research all about. We knew that while we were targeting our undergrad prospects through advertising, that we had to make sure that the experience translated in anything we were doing with recruitment communications. So we partnered very closely with admissions and made sure that our message was consistent and we elevated our brand look and feel across everything that prospective students were getting from RIT. Here's a small sample. You can see the visual language here. You can see how we have personalized. You can, you can see how we talk about our community. Um, and, and we use the language of, Kelsey, you're, all, you're always onto something amazing to tie back to our creative platform. And if you looked at these pieces in depth, you would see our message really come to life, including our photography guidelines and such. We also make sure that anything that we do as far as campaigns uh, go for recruitment specifically are in alignment with the brand. We have great partners, again, in admissions that are open and receptive. And together, we build, we build campaigns such as the one you see here for an open house where you have not you have the web page, you have a social ad, you have an ad on the website, um, you have a print version, um, really all tactics and channels coming together to deliver a consistent look and feel and to really elevate the brand and do something that's more aspirational and inspirational as opposed to really talking about the nuts and bolts because they will get the nuts and bolts when they come here. Uh, so this was our campaign to entice students and families to come visit. What's next? Well, um, as I alluded to before, we are going to do another burst um, in spring. So even though it doesn't feel like spring here, <laughs> we are getting ready to launch our campaign um, in the next week or 10 days, depending on just some last minute touches. Um, I would, it's safe to say the first two weeks of February will have most of our tactics in the marketplace. And if you don't see the ads, I, it is okay because it is really targeted mostly to 17 year olds. And if you're not one of a uh, 17 year old, perhaps it's okay if you didn't see one. Um, so our approach is really one, two punch. Um, so we show them some ads and if based on the level of interest we see from that activity, we do some remarketing or retargeting. Um, so we, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's basically making sure that RIT stays top of mind by showing advertising to them in relevant platforms. We want to optimize and continue to optimize across the board. Our intelligence is showing what stories and content are working, what we need to refine, what channels and tactics are working and what we need to refine, what devices are working. So we know our, uh, one of the things we found is majority, really almost 90% of our audience is coming from mobile, in, whether it's parents, whether it's students, whether it's counselors. So really making sure that when we build the landing pages or build our ads, that we check them on mobile first before we check them on desktop. Ken, um, we have a question from Corey who's asking um, if you all involved any of our outstanding students in any of this activity. Were they part of the data collection process? Were they part of the creative development? How, how were they involved at all? Yeah, so really a lot of the work that has been out there has been informed through input from a lot of constituents, including students. So our brand agency, that is RG, did a lot of discovery with students. We also had our national campaign forum look at students. They came to Imagine RIT. They talked to a few students there. Um, when we did our initial sort of awareness study and really under 
we polled our current students about what it is that makes RIT special to them and use that intelligence to drive some of the messaging. And then finally, we do um, some sort of, especially when we work with admissions, um, anything that goes out, we involve current students in some sort of a focus group type of a setting. Not anything, but really big things, big initiatives. Uh, we, we invite them to provide their feedback and test the waters there. And we make sure that all of our work is informed by students by virtue of really, you know, walking the walk in terms of co-op and experiential learning. We offer co-ops and internships to students within our group, as well as an admission, marketing, et cetera. And really, they are the ones who kind of keep it real for us uh, when we try to get too cool for our own, <laughs> for our own good. Um, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, and I, and I would just add, within, within our division, the Marketing Communications Division, uh, we have uh, over 70 students working, working with us uh, across, across all of those areas that, that are mentioned. And I know beyond that, in other, in other divisions and other colleges as well, that students are, uh, are utilized directly in the, in the creation, so. Thank you for that question. Um, and last point about what's to come is we are going to add to our current repository of sto stories that are going to be in the market by talking about alumni outcomes. So we want to talk about a brand through the lens of what our alumni have found to be beneficial at RIT and how did they get where they did in terms of their career. So you are the first group to get a sneak peek into that. So we are going to be featuring John Traver who is from 2010, and he built his own company called Frame.io, and he is a graduate of College of Art and Design. Uh, we also are going to feature Alison Ritter, who works at IBM, and she has, her major has been Media Arts, Arts and Technology. And so we are going to talk about just how they took their RIT education and they combined technology and the arts to land their dream job. Um, so this really brings together all the, again, key components of a brand narrative. So that's, uh, that's really all that um, I have from the national campaign standpoint. Um, I, so this is really what I would say paid media. Um, we also have other forms of media, so earned media, shared media, and owned media. So together it's called PESO. Uh, so paid, earned, shared, and owned. And I'm going to let Bob talk about the other components of PESO. All right, Ken, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I get excited about my job because as a former journalist, there is no shortage of stories at RIT. Uh, we have more than a dozen writers who cover the university, and there is so many great stories to mine when it comes to um, what our alumni are doing, what our faculty are working on in terms of research and all the great stuff that our students do. So we have a team of writers, we have a team of photographers, we have a team of videographers that go out and help find these stories and position these stories. So with that, basically the RIT homepage is, is our front door for all of these things. So a year ago, we had our website redesign and launch. And as you can imagine, over the years, as we all know, websites tend to kind of, I always kind of make it akin to like a fishing line that kind of gets, kind of gets caught a little bit. But over time, it was time to kind of clean up our website, redesign it, coordinate it, so it was very cohesive in our message, in our messaging. So you'll see that we did launch um, in the spring of 2019, very high level. We hit most of those uh, most of our nine colleges plus divisions, and we've been continuing work ever since. Again, this is the front door of all of our content. We look at ourselves as brand journalists. Uh, we're blessed to have a team of some great storytellers, and some of the things that you should be familiar with as alumni are certainly the University Magazine, which has a circulation of nearly 130,000, a global circulation. It is free to the alumni base, so we hope you enjoy it. We know it's print, and in this world of uh, where we're doing more and more with digital, we do get a good sense that the print product, as it comes out three times a year, resonates with you because it is a special piece. There's still room for print, and we see that uh, in surveys, not only at RIT, but across the nation, that if you do print right, 
um, it's very well um, received. Um, we also do a research magazine now. Now that RIT has elevated to the research status in the, in the hemisphere, if you will, of universities, just to kind of recap that, we are now a, a national research university uh, as considered by the Carnegie classification. I'm not going to get too deep on that. But the upshot there is that we now play with the big boys um, at the research level. And we just have so many wonderful stories to tell of all the great work uh, that our faculty and students are doing in discovery. This magazine that you see here is sent to um, a good group of folks. In particular, it helps drive our reputation when it comes to surveying other presidents and leaders at other universities who help drive, drive US news rankings. Uh, the President's Report. This is actually a, a sneak peek of the upcoming President's Report that is about to come out uh, next month. It will be circulated to various constituencies in print, but it will also eventually be available online um, later in February. Again, this is a great influencer piece and really breaks down what we're up to at RIT um, with President Munson. It really ties back to the strategic plan as well. But we have to always think out of the box and um, just like uh, other what you would say mainstream media, we, we, we also do things that we produce our own content in a cohesive fashion. We have the ability to disseminate our own content. So podcasts, for example, we're doing very well here where we'll interview RIT experts, they'll interview each other on a range of issues. It could be sustainability, it could be something that's happening in the microsystems world, it could be something that's happening um, in a lot of areas. So we, we urge you to check that out uh, uh, on iTunes. Uh, we're getting some good traction with podcasting for thought leadership. We're not going to abandon earn media, of course, so media relations is a big part of what we do. Um, I want to make sure I have the right thing here. Is this still Okay, perfect. Uh, earn media, um, still a, obviously a big part of our portfolio uh, from a public relations standpoint. We do get approximately 25,000 annual placements per year. And really it's about getting third party credibility, very important to us. So certainly we work with local media, regional media, national media, but also in the trades. So for example, if you take the College of Art and Design there's probably 10 magazines in that college that we want to influence or so because we want folks to see what we're doing in that area. We, we know that we are faced with a shrinking media landscape at the, at the mainstream media area. That's why owned media, going back to owned media, is so important to us because we have the ability to produce and publish our own work. But certainly earned media is fantastic because we are getting a basically about $10 million a year in what we would call ad equivalency. And again, I think that third party credibility that you get from outside uh, media is still very important to us. <clears throat> Social media, the shared part of Peso that Ken referenced. Um, we, we have these top five social media accounts, no surprise there, but our, but our impressions and following is continuing to grow. As you can see, we've, we're approaching 300,000 followers on all of these main social media accounts. We urge you to follow and share stories. Um, you'll certainly get an idea of what's going on in the, in the RIT community. I wanted to mention TikTok, because that's something new. We already have 55,000 followers since we launched um, less than six months ago. We're one of the leading universities in the nation on TikTok followers. Why does that matter? Because TikTok is a, a great influencer and being viewed by the videos being viewed there, mostly by teenagers, say 14 to 17. So we're kind of exposing them to RIT at a very early age with some really fun content. And of course, I'm assuming that everyone on this podcast or webinar is following these social media sites. I joke, but yeah, that's one of the things you can do to help is certainly follow our platforms. Athletic communications, another great part of uh, the PR portfolio. And let me go back a little bit here. Um, prior to uh, RIT becoming Division I in hockey and moving around in some conferences, we um, 
they accounted for about eight to ten percent of our media placements. Today, they're about fifteen to twenty percent of our media placements because of the great um, um, publicity we get in terms of hockey and our our other athletics. So you can see the traffic there in athletics. It's it's certainly a, an important part of our pride and spirit uh, when it comes to the RIT brand overall. I'm going to turn it over to John, um, but I just want to finish by saying my team of storytellers, like I said, there's never, there's always plenty of stories to tell at RIT. So many great stories to that resonate with the public. All right. Uh, thanks, Ken and Bob. And also, I did, did want to give a shout out on the reputation campaign. Our, our agency, Gatesman, uh, was, a, was a major partner in the development and the creation and the placement of all of those efforts. So. Um, so, all right, so we, what have been some of the results from our efforts? So we'll kind of start from closer to, let's call it the top of the funnel, the <laughs> campaign itself. But you can see the numbers, but uh, a whopping 120 million impressions of RIT advertising during the campaign. That translated into over 1 million clicks, so people really responded and engaged with us. An important measure of campaign effectiveness was the fact that our click-through rate was over three times higher than the industry average. We had uh, three quarters of a million social media engagements across those RIT social media accounts directly from the campaign, as well as a 172% increase in YouTube views versus the prior year. And over 11 million of those people viewing our videos watched them all the way through, proving the stories were both emotionally engaging and informative. Turning to the web, uh, over a quarter million visitors have come uh, to RIT.edu. Of those, 80% were completely new to RIT, which shows both the effective targeting and effective messaging. A key strategic plan goal uh, is to attract more women. So we are pleased that almost two thirds of those who came to our website were women. And moving further down the funnel, an important next step in the journey is to visit our academic program pages. So we are very pleased with a 50%, 57% year-over-year increase. And finally, perhaps most, most importantly, taking it all the way downstream, uh, inquiries uh, are up 18% year-on-year. We've had a 14% increase in visitors uh, versus a year ago, an 11% increase in freshman applications, and a 17% increase in deposits. Uh, so we've been pleased, again, with our close partnership with uh, admissions, enrollment management, and many others. Uh, a lot of things have gone into this, but we're excited about uh, where, where we've come and where we're going. Finally, uh, and Bob alluded to a couple of these as well, but really importantly, how can you help? And this is, again, not, not an exhaustive list, but a few things that we came up with are to reinforce uh, our RIT message you know, in your interactions with college-bound students, peers, and other alumni. Uh, share that message in the industries uh, or the organizations in which you work. Wear and show your RIT pride. Uh, take part in the conversation surrounding higher ed and RIT's value. Be a continual champion for RIT. As Bob mentioned, please follow, share, and promote the RIT stories you see on social media, and please create your own. And visit and, and or spread the word about Imagine RIT now in late April. It will still be sunny. Yeah, so. that's right. <laughs> and there's the link to that as well. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to the group. Yes, our, our uh, alumni audience will remember uh, the last week of January in Rochester. It is beautifully sunny and very cold today. So um, yeah, you'll, you probably all remember that situation. So if anyone does have questions for uh, John, Ken, or Bob, Go ahead and type those into the chat box. And I believe we also have John Rodabaugh, uh, who's the Executive Director of Alumni Relations and several of our RIT Alumni Association board members on the webinar today as well. And I just want to reiterate for people who live, especially outside the Rochester area, if you're looking for involvement and ways to uh, get engaged and ways that you can be part of sharing out the terrific story that is RIT. Um, alumni Relations is a great place to start. 
Uh, everyone has both a regional alumni relations contact and you have a college alumni relations contact, someone who's actually working with your college and your and the department from which you received your degrees that can help connect you into a variety of activities. Some of them are social, some of them are networking, some of them are community service, um, some of them are actually uh, uh, involved with the uh, industry and career activities you may already be plugged into. So for example, we have a group of people getting together at ShmooCon for all of our computing alumni. Um, and that's a really great way for alumni to get involved and just connect back in with your fellow alumni and with the alumni relations staff. Uh, there are a ton of links in the chat box as well including uh, the link to the alumni relations site, which is rat.edu slash alumni, and you'll find a wealth of information there. And also, uh, while we absolutely do want you to be following RIT social channels, it's a great place to get information about the university. Also, make sure you are plugged into the alumni association channels. We have Facebook pages, uh, a private LinkedIn group, where there's a lot of job postings that show up there, and uh, Twitter and um, an Instagram account. So uh, you'll find that the Alumni Association is all over there as well. So we do have a question in from Mike. Uh, he says, do you advertise on TV anymore? I often see ads from other Rochester Buffalo area colleges. Um, hi, this is Kim. Thank you for your question, Mike. Um, so we looked at a variety of channels and a variety of tactics, including television, billboards, etc. And we really found that the idea of using video was compelling, but the idea of using video on TV was not looking as powerful in terms of the audience intelligence that we gathered. So we do use video, but we use it for on YouTube and other channels. Um, we advertise locally um, on television when in and around Imagine RIT and, and the hockey games, et cetera. Um, but for broad awareness, like the one I showed you before, the, the map that we're trying to cover, if you will, um, it's most effective when it's targeted uh, through digital. And we found that to be the most successful. And again, this has been an intelligence gathered from a variety of sources that we find some de degree of confidence that this is working. Um, should we ch look at budgets and such moving forward and expand that out even more? We can we'll certainly put it back in the hopper for our for our agency and for us to consider. I'd like to add to that. This is Bob. Um, one of the reasons you do see some other colleges on television, especially local uh, here in Rochester, Buffalo, is because those are more local and regional colleges where they're drawing a high percentage of their students from this upstate Western New York area. And quite frankly, I'd say between 12 and 14% of our undergraduates are from the Rochester area. So I think that's very important to note. Uh, that we are a national university where more than half of our students come from outside of the state of New York. Thus, we got to be careful with our spend, if you will. Uh, as Ken mentioned, when it comes to Imagine IT, since we're trying to draw people from the Western New York area, then we certainly use uh, television, radio advertising at the mainstream level. Yeah, and just uh, this is John, uh, picking up on what Ryan has, has noted. Um, the Saunders uh, School of Business College of Business in particular does do some advertising because they are, they are predominantly feeding from the local community, particularly for the executive MBA program. So we have seen billboards and some other uh, more analog techniques, if you will. Um, so that does make sense in that case. Great. Um, and I want to just respond to Eric and anyone else who has the same question. Um, if you are living outside of the uh, of a particular region, not in Rochester, um, we will definitely have our alumni relations staff touch base with you. There is a lot of activity in the Los Angeles area, very active chapter program there. So we will make sure that uh, you get plugged into the people that you need to know that, that are actually out in your area. Um, thanks to Bobby, Robert Moakley, who is a great RIT champion. Appreciate that this was uh, helpful to you. 
Uh, we have a question from Corey. He says, I have volunteered at local college fairs on behalf of RIT where little as far as collateral has been used or shared. Is that a practice under review and something that you would look at? Yeah, so this question is perhaps more <laughs> for our admissions colleagues as well, but I will take a stab at answering. This is Ken. Um, so we have produced a ton of collateral. I will say that we are doing less but better um, in terms of distribution. We are trying to package things in a way that makes sense. So, so we did a, a, a collateral on our academic portfolio. We did a collateral on a community um, and, and spirit. And then we did a collateral on experiential learning and co-op. So we're trying to hit some key aspects we know that students and parents and others are concerned about or have questions about. Um, as far as having it at the fairs, we have we are trying to balance how much we want to distribute and hand out versus how much uh, data we collect digitally and then send them information. Um, so I think, um, you know, high school representatives or school counselors who are on the road, they definitely have a lot more material. Uh, we have worked with them to produce that, uh, I, I believe late November, December for this year's cycle. So I hope you'll see the more and more collateral making its way there, but we are also trying to be efficient where possible that they don't leave with the bag full of collateral from every university and the brother, but we are very focused on what we want to give them, what information do we need from them, and how do we continue to maintain that relationship and elevate that relationship with subsequent communications. Let me also say, Corey, thank you for volunteering to be at those events, um, having alumni whose face is there at the tables as students and their parents are walking through makes a big difference because you are going to really personalize the RIT experience to those people. And uh, in a lot, of, I can speak only for myself. My son is actually a junior in college and we went to a couple of the college fairs and the people who did follow up to us meant more than the people who had the collateral. So I think you'll find um, that that may be a very big part of the success factor is making sure that we're actually reaching back out to those facts, folks after the fair. Um, Eric, I think we got you connected in with Megan. She's in charge of regional chapters, so she's going to uh, touch base with you. And oh, there, there we go. See, it was worth it for you to stay through the whole thing because John does say, John Rodebaugh has said that uh, we'll be sending out a nice alumni giveaway for those of you who attended the webinar today. So um, there you go. There's there is there is a reason to stick into the to the bitter end. So uh, thanks a lot, John. We really appreciate that. So if there are no more questions, uh, we are going to go ahead and wrap up. If you do think of a question after the event, go ahead and email that to RIT alumni at rit.edu, and we will direct your questions to our panel of RIT marketing leaders. Note that all of our participants will receive an email, as well as John's gift, uh, in about a week with a link to today's webinar recording. Thanks to all three of our panelists for sharing your knowledge and the exciting future for RIT. We want to remind all of our Tiger alumni that your gifts to RIT are helping today's students achieve their dreams and also raising RIT's national reputation along with all of this branding activity. If you have not yet made your annual gift to the Fund for RIT, please visit rit.edu slash make a gift and select an area of the university that matters to you. And please join us on Wednesday, February 5th for our next Tiger webinar, Entrepreneurship in the Music Industry, How to Start Your Career in Music. We will hear from Aaron Spieldenner, producer, video game composer, and sound designer for LA-based company Bad Dream Games. Aaron is the creator of the award-winning indie title, One Hand Clapping, and is a syndicated producer for Real World Productions, an international radio jingle production company. Thank you again for joining us today. Please uh, exit the webinar by simply closing your live storm window, and please do let us know what you thought of the webinar through a brief survey that you will receive via email. Have a great day. <laughs>